When it comes to galaxies, there is one topic that even today is very poorly understood. The idea of galactic magnetic fields. How exactly do they work? What forms them? What effects do they have on the rest of the galaxy? And what do they even look like if looked at from the outside? Which I'm sure is going to result in a lot of comments from the Electric Universe people. And yeah, hi. Electric Universe is still pseudoscience, just FYI. But anyway, despite all of this, despite all of these claims and suggestions, in reality we still understand the magnetic fields in galaxies very poorly. Except for maybe dark matter, there's probably no other topic that we understand so little about. Nevertheless, pretty much most of the research from the last few decades suggests that magnetic fields play in a lot of different galactic processes, processes including the evolution of shapes of galaxies, the formation of stars, the amount of gas that reaches certain locations, and even the types of stars that end up being formed. But despite all of these individual findings, the overall picture in regards to magnetic fields in galaxies is still not very clear. But today we're going to discuss a new study that you can find in the description that for the first time ever uses a lot of actual evidence, actual data from several telescopes, including the SOFIA telescope, to finally make first official conclusions. Just as a quick reminder, SOFIA telescope was retired in 2022 and it was essentially a flying telescope that was able to produce these incredible images by flying in the upper atmosphere and by observing the universe in the right frequencies. With tons and tons of images that came out over the years, showing us various galaxies in a way we've never seen them before. But most importantly, for the first time ever, showing us actual magnetic fields. And that's the important part. Of all of the things we can observe with telescopes, magnetic fields are practically impossible to see. Even though they're common and they seem to be present everywhere, they cannot be easily observed by a typical telescope. For example, based on various simulations, we know that generally magnetic fields should provide a lot of pressure which sort of balances gravity, especially when it comes to the interstellar medium or a lot of gas present inside the galaxy. So there's a kind of a counterplay here between the gravity and the magnetic fields. But simulations alone are just not enough, mostly because they're not always correct. Actual observations are way more important. And so even though various studies and various simulations suggest that the magnetic fields can easily change the gas flow inside things like spiral arms, or even inside the galactic bars and the galactic halos, we don't have any physical evidence for any of this. But in order to learn about galactic evolution, or even things like formation of stars, including of course our sun, all of this has to be taken into consideration. Figuring out exactly how gravity and magnetic fields interact with one another is really important. Intriguingly, one thing that a lot of studies have discovered in the past is the fact that it seems to play a big role in star formation. For example, inside various molecular clouds, for star formation to start, magnetic fields are often responsible for reducing angular momentum in order to start the collapse inside the cloud and to then start star formation. So basically, gravity alone cannot easily explain why stars form. You do need to have some kind of a magnetic property here, which is by the way something we've known for decades now. It is not something that was discovered by the Electric Universe people. Once again, pseudoscience. But the exact effects and exact properties involved in this is still not very clear. And what's even more unclear is what effects this would have on the entire galaxy. For example, if this is an active galaxy with a lot of starburst activity, does this actually change the shape? What about galaxies that have very active supermassive black holes? What about radio galaxies? And since here we're talking about magnetic fields that are basically thousands of light years in length, it does present a very different picture. But so far all of this was based on theories or simulations. Now we have a bit more visual evidence. But I guess the question is, how? How can we possibly see this? Well, this is where we can actually use the property known as polarization. Light tends to polarize, or basically, as you see right here, change its angular polarization when it passes through powerful magnetic fields. And so technically, by looking at a lot of optical light that passes through a lot of different dust that might contain magnetic fields or magnetic lines inside of it, in theory, this would result in polarization that should be observable even with optical telescopes. And so just like with the experiment you can use at home by using a typical horseshoe magnet and a bunch of iron fillings that tend to assume the shape along the paper, something similar becomes visible if you were to look at a typical galaxy. Here's the famous Centaurus A. Our neighbor, that sort of looks like this, 
if looked at in radio light and in the optical light. But by focusing on just the polarized light, coming from hundreds, thousands or even millions of stars, we start seeing polarization lines that resemble this. Once again, very similar to these iron fillings. And this becomes even more prominent if you look at infrared emissions, because it can then show us the magnetic lines inside dust as well, not just stars. Which means that we can now start forming images of magnetic lines inside galaxies using different frequencies and potentially showing us different types of magnetic fields. And so now we have this first study ever comparing magnetic fields in various physical environments of other galaxies, looking at 15 well-known galaxies in both radio light, but also using infrared observations from the SOFIA telescope. Focusing on some famous galaxies like Centaurus A, Antenna Galaxies, or the Circinus Galaxy, but also looking at galaxies with a lot of star formation, also known as starburst galaxies, or galaxies undergoing active collision. And so in essence, this shows us a large variety of a lot of different galaxies with a lot of different activity inside of them. By the way, this galaxy, this is the Black Eye Galaxy, and we actually recently talked about it because something really cool was discovered here as well. The video is in the description. And so by conducting this analysis, the researchers behind this paper discovered two different magnetic fields that seem to be present in most galaxies. And so first, the radio observations discovered unusually ordered magnetic fields in a lot of ionized warm medium, and usually several thousand light years above the galactic disk. In other words, if you were to look at a typical relatively silent galaxy, you would discover quite a lot of very straight lines that seem to propagate away from the galaxy and might potentially play a role in recirculating gas from outside of the galaxy back into the galaxy itself. I mean, obviously, the actual function is still unclear, but the presence of these large, long, orderly lines becomes very obvious by looking at it in radio light. But then, by looking in the infrared light, and specifically the emissions from various starburst regions, or regions inside the galaxy itself, the result here was something way, way more chaotic. Very unpredictable, very misaligned magnetic lines that in essence would create, well, basically this, a kind of a piece of art. With many of these lines being entangled, but also interacting with one another, potentially causing even more chaos on the inside. And these types of lines seem to be very prominent inside galactic arms, and especially inside various starburst regions. And so a lot of spiral arms, or a lot of starburst regions, seem to have a huge amount of turbulence, which potentially results in these unusual magnetic lines much stronger than other lines that seem to amplify the effects around themselves, thus causing a lot more activity than would be otherwise possible. But intriguingly, if you were to look in quieter regions, so for example regions between the arms, or in the medium above the galactic disk, all of the lines here once again become straight and ordered, which sort of implies that maybe galactic rotation plays a role in stabilizing various magnetic fields. But if the galactic rotation stabilizes longer lines, various molecular clouds and starburst activity basically does the opposite. It creates a lot of chaos and lines that kind of go all over the place. With certain locations having a lot of entangled magnetic fields, possibly a result of turbulence, and a lot of chaotic formation right in the center. So definitely some really cool discoveries. But here's the important part. That's really all the evidence we have for magnetic lines anywhere outside of the solar system. There is really nothing extraordinary, anything unusual, or anything that seems to violate any current laws. And obviously gravity still plays a huge role in all of this. But the biggest mystery to solve here is the interaction between gravity and magnetic fields. For example, based on simulations, there is quite a lot of evidence that even in star formation, magnetic fields tend to either increase or decrease the total mass of the star as it forms. For example, highly magnetic stars with very powerful emissions tend to eventually become much smaller in size. So these effects are definitely well known, at least based on the simulations. But exactly how this influences galaxies and galactic evolution, and what role this plays in the evolution of everything in the universe, that's what we still don't understand, and that's what a lot of scientists want to learn about, and why these observations are so important. But there's definitely still a lot to learn. For example, one suggestion here is that there's definitely some kind of a feedback loop. The magnetic fields seem to either increase or decrease star production, and evolve galaxies in certain ways. 
But unfortunately, this is the best images we have so far. There's just not enough evidence to learn anything else. There might be future missions, especially missions by NASA, that might be able to see more. One such mission planned for 2030 is PRIMA, the probe far infrared mission for astrophysics, but that's basically a decade away. And so chances are that for the next decade, we might unfortunately not get any more new data, or at least more accurate data, needed for additional studies. Which means that we might not be able to answer any of these questions, and all of this is going to remain a mystery for at least some time now. And I think intriguingly, the biggest mystery here is, so how exactly does any of this even work? What produces these fields? Technically, a lot of ISM or interstellar medium should be both positive and negative, thus having neutral charge. Yet we see magnetic fields, and we see the magnetic lines, even in the Milky Way galaxy. By the way, check out the new discovery coming from the Milky Way galaxy about this, also in the description below. And so, at least for now, the only explanation we have is, it probably has something to do with the actual physical motion. By having turbulence and by having a lot of activity inside starburst regions, it seems to encourage the overall change in charge and thus produce magnetic lines, amplifying the field and creating a kind of a magnetic dynamo. Or in other words, it changes the mechanical energy into magnetic energy. But that's of course just assumptions for now. But maybe in the future, we might know more. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Wait, do not type that comment yet. I know you're going to write Electric Universe. And I know you think this is what it proves. It does not prove anything. This is not electric universe. Electric universe is still pseudoscience. Don't do it. Do not press enter. Okay. Good, thank you.